Today I'm talking about black chokeberry, which is a native plant that's a member of the rose family. And here's the general form of the plant. It's a shrub, which means that like a tree, it has woody growth, but unlike a tree, it's small and it's spreading. Um, now this here is many of them planted together, but it's quite the wall of chokeberry. So the chokeberries we were just looking at were about five or six feet tall, um, and they grow in different heights. These here are about three or four feet tall. Uh, you can see them all growing here. They've been planted. Um, I should say that this is a native plant. It grows wild in the eastern and central US um, and Canada, as far north as Ontario and as far south as Arkansas, and then all the way east to the coast. Um, it's planted ornamentally a lot because like uh, other members of the rose family, it has a beautiful showy five petaled flower. Um, and also the leaves turn this beautiful uh, rusty red, as you can see on this plant right here. It's turning fall and everything's looking very pretty. Um, so even if you live in the western US or Canada, uh, you might be able to find it um, planted like in front of businesses or um, along boulevards or that kind of thing. Here is the leaf of Aronia, um, and as you can see it's oval shaped it's pretty typical of this species. It can be wider or narrower. It's a bit variable. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, it has these final serrations around the edge. And if you look very closely at the mid vein, this line running down here, you can see all those little black dots. Um, and those are glands, actually. And there's even more glands and the serrations doesn't look like they're really showing up great on this camera but they are there trust me if we look at the bark of the main stem here you can see it's gray and you can also see these little holes here uh there's many of them dotting stem. These are called lenticels um, and basically they're pores. They help the tree to breathe and uh, they're distinctive of several different species um, like for example birch has it, alder, um, a lot of things in the rose family which this is like cherry has it um, but can see how it looks here. They're just little... Here's my finger for comparison. <laughs> uh, this is a very skinny branch and they're just these tiny little dots. Okay, so the berries of chokeberry grow in this cluster and you can see it has this little star on the bottom. You probably know that apple and Many other species have that blueberry, um, and this is a mark of the rose family. It's the sepals, which are like modified leaves that are underneath the flower petals. It's the leftover sepals, and uh, the rose family always has five sepals, so that's why you see this little five-pointed star on the bottom of the fruit. So I'm here next to the chokeberry bush. Um, and you can see all these chokeberries on here. They're very delicious. Um, well, they can be delicious. This particular bush tastes pretty good. Some of them can be very astringent and bitter. And, you know, it just kind of depends on the variety of the bush and maybe like the micro habitat it's growing in. I'm not sure exactly, but when you're foraging, it's good to taste test because things all taste different. Um, but anyway, the part of the part that you eat is the berry. Um, but typically what you do is you juice it. 
So you can probably see it's got all this, it's a very juicy berry, all this red juice in there. Um, and the reason you do that is because all the stringency, the astringency and the bitterness is in the pulp. Uh, so when you're juicing it, you get rid of all that stuff and you're just left with the delicious, pure juice flavor. Um, and all you have to do, it's really easy, you don't need a juicer or anything. You just uh, put the berries in like a pot or a big bowl, add a little bit of water and mash them up. Um, and then you strain it through like a nylon jelly bag or a muslin bag and you wring it out, discard the pulp and keep the juice. And you can just drink the juice straight, straight at it. You can drink the juice straight as it is, or you can mix it with uh, other juice that's milder tasting, like apple or pear or grape or whatever. Um, personally, I think the juice on its own is delicious. You don't need to mix it with anything. Um, and I like getting that full flavor of the aronia. Um, and another way to do it is you could put it in a pot. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and eat these. You can put it in a pot and warm it up and that will extract more of the juice but also the bitterness is going to come out that way. Um, so I recommend cold pressing it. Um, you know it's kind of a... it depends on what your priorities are I guess. Is your priority to get like a higher quality better tasting product or is it to get more of that product? Um, because you want more, heating it up is going to get you more if you want it better tasting. The cold press version is better tasting, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so yeah, go out and try it. They're yummy.